guest today is Mike Boki. He's the general manager of the Capitol Exhibit Center in Fredericton, New Brunswick. There is a major discussion going on right now in that community about the future use of the grounds. Mike provides some content, details, and history as to the dynamic of the current situation and potential for the future. It's uh, the hot topic of the exhibition grounds, relations with city. Um, it also ties to any city that's got historic property in its middle and what to do with it. That tension between new development and maintaining history and culture and all those things tourists like to come see. Yeah, it's not uncommon because, you know, fairs, you know, are, are typically, you know, 100 years old or, or very old or, or a lot older than 100. And, you know, communities have grown around them. So now, you know, fairs and exhibitions find themselves in property that's now valuable and they get pressure. And it's from the largest centers like Toronto to small centers like Fredericton. So I recently sat in a, on a national workshop and uh, we had a round table discussion where other fairs from across the country came in and uh, that were having some, some issues with their municipality and we're looking for ways to kind of improve that and work around what was going on. And uh, in this particular round table, uh, it, was, it was everybody's consensus that there was no relationship in worse condition right now than that was happening between the exhibition board here in Fredericton, and uh, um, but but it isn't uncommon. So so other municipalities have found a way to to value the land um, as as an exhibition as a fair, and and work together to make it better for the people that live in their municipality. And uh, that's what Fredericton needs to do is to learn from the other municipalities that have said, all right, how do we make this this better? What does it have to be that we have we see the value there that you know far exceeds the potential value from from property taxes? And and there's lots of success stories out there, so they don't need to reinvent the the wheel. You know, um, the former mayor Brad Woodside was uh, you know involved with the mayor council across Canada. I'm sure there's contacts of networks on their end that they could speak with other municipalities who have made it work. Mm -hmm. And there are stories where it didn't work. And there's those stories typically where the fairs have moved, the uh, fairs have disappeared, that they couldn't handle the transition from a, you know, a, a high traffic location um, to move out to the perimeter of the city. And the fairs typically fail. And that's, that's you know, the big concern that we would have if, if that happened here in Fredericton. Yeah. Maybe to help bring the audience up to speed a little bit, we're speaking to the, the move by the City of Fredericton Council to um, change the location of the exhibition grounds, move it up to the Grant Harvey Center up uh, on the outside of town, and to develop for um, housing the, the exhibition grounds. So, but, but I didn't want to lose that thread. You have a story about um, going to some community where they use the exhibition as the landmark that draws all the traffic off the highway down into the downtown area. Yeah, the, the exhibition grounds are the landmark, and it is no different here in Fredericton. I mean, it is downtown. It's in the heart of the city. And yeah, recently we did a tour at the New York State Fairgrounds, and, and I first noticed as I was approaching the city of Syracuse that it, it, the signs weren't just Syracuse in 20 miles. It was the, the state fair in 20 miles. And as you got into it, uh, the city, uh, this was the exit to the, the state fairgrounds. And it was a landmark. And people use that to, to maybe if they weren't even going to the fairgrounds, it was still associated with whatever it was else in, in, that, in that area. And I was very impressed because you, know, you thought they right away, just looking at that, you seen that they recognized the value that the state fairgrounds offered that small, you know, relatively small city in Syracuse, yeah. and and we we do see that, and you see it in Canada in, in places when you're traveling through Toronto, you know, and you go down Lakeshore, you know, you're going to the C and E, yeah. whether you're going downtown or going to a hockey game or a baseball game, you're going to the the C &E. yeah. and E, and and you know, that would be the, the the ultimate success here is is to see Fredericton change their their approach and their image and their view of the exhibition grounds from, you know, what it is today to something that they're, they're proud to drive people down to. Yep. Um, to set this up a little bit, let's do some history. 
so that the audience can uh, have an idea of uh, the beginnings of all of this and and because while there's content or important con it gives us a context for what's going on today because without knowing that history it'd be like well why the fuss just close the x up i'm um, develop it right. and so that history is important because it probably will also tie to a future Right. You know, 20 years from now, what, what could the X look right. like? So let's start us yeah. off with the history. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's really there's two questions that I think that people need to, to, to be asking and to understand. And, and the first is, you know, is you know, the history with the property. Does the city of Fredericton even have the right to use that property or take over or repurpose that property? And then the second question is, is there a need to repurpose that property? So go back to the history of it. Do they have the right to to repurpose it? Um, they, 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 they clearly, they don't. The history is, is very simple. Uh, in the late 1800s, uh, there was a fire. The old exhibition grounds was, was on the east, easter side of, the, of town, and the, the, old, the old exhibition building burnt. So the, uh, the Odell family uh, provided the land where we currently are located, where the exhibition is currently located. It used to be the Odell Farm. And they provided that land for the exhibition to continue. And by 1926, they had actually provided the deed to the property. They gave the land to the exhibition uh, to ensure that there was always going to be an exhibition. There was always uh, agriculture and there was entertainment on the place. And at that time, when they gave it to the exhibition, what was the legal entity that they gave it to? It was the, the, it's still currently today, uh, Ag Society Number no. 34. Okay. Um, it was incorporated in 1889 under the Ag Society Act, and uh, it exists today. It is uh, it what makes up the membership in the Fredericton Exhibition Limited, and they continued to, to have the property deeded in Ag Society for the exhibition from uh, 19. Uh, 26 through to 1947. So if you set up 1947, the war is over. Uh, for the past uh, five years, the, there hasn't been an exhibition. The exhibition grounds were used to house troops during the war effort, and they were wanting to reestablish. You know, life was getting back to normal here in Canada. Um, the war was over, and that didn't, you know, the war didn't just end, and then everything went back to normal. It took a while for that transition to happen. So you can imagine that during the war, there was no exhibition, there was no revenue coming in, and they wanted to reestablish it. And they'd been um, being billed for property tax during the war because there was provincial taxes on the grounds, and uh, you know, you assume that they probably had some back taxes during the war because no revenue with no exhibition, and they were coming up with a strategy that would allow the exhibition to get back reestablished and get going again for the people of Fredericton. And the, between the city and the board of directors for the exhibition at the time, they came up with a strategy that, uh, that if the land was in the city's name, that uh, in, in the 40s, the provincial government wasn't taxing uh, city municipal property. So they would get out of that tax burden if they just transferred the land over to the city's name. So on, on one document, the uh, the original lease, this is a this is a copy. In in this one document, it outlines uh, a transaction, and in the transaction, the Egg Society, the Exhibition Limited, transferred over the deed to the land to the city. In exchange, the city transferred over a perpetual lease. And said, all right, here, we'll put it in your name. And the city said, all right, we'll lease it to you forever. And in this document, it has some conditions, you know, to protect for the exhibition. It was that it always remained given to the city, but it always remained for the exhibition as wished by the Odell family. In the city, they said, well, we'll give you a perpetual lease. So as long as you exist, the lease will always renew. And uh, if there's no exhibition after three years, uh, that would be would basically break the lease, and uh, the city could then at that point, you know, find another use, another purpose for the land. Um, there's also a condition that uh, the exhibition look after the, the property and the land uh, as it's currently done today. The exhibition looks after everything from pavement to building repairs, and it uh, it says that. Uh, um, subleases 
So things like the Brandon Brewer lease or Tim Hortons or William Seafood, uh, that those all have to be approved by the city. And uh, it also says that the lease is at a dollar a year. So um, it basically lands deeded to the city in exchange. The city transaction is that there's a perpetual lease. So it was never, you know, it was never purchased by taxpayers. It was never intended that the city would have uh, the ability or right to repurpose the land. Uh, it was, you know, the city trying to work with the exhibition to make sure that it was there for future generations. And as it turned out, you know, by the 50s, the provincial government was uh, taxing uh, municipal property. Uh, there's a change in policy and uh, the land was never gifted back to the to the exhibition board. And, uh, you know, every 21 years when this goes up for renewal, part of the perpetual lease, um, there's a consideration, you know, what what if, what, what could the land be or is, is the best use? Why is it 21 years? You know, I don't know where the 21, <laughs> if that was illegal, a lot illegal, but that's what's in here. Sure. Um, and, and I think it's, it probably was a, they needed a mechanism where they could go back through and check and make sure that the conditions were, were sure. being, being met. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really just protection if there was a day when the exhibition, you know, no longer continued. Yeah. But what you find is today, you know, if you fast forward, you know, 60 years later, that, uh, 70 years later, that, um, the exhibition is actually stronger now, certainly stronger than it was after the war. Yeah. You know, the agriculture program is, is stronger now. The interest from the public, you know, has never been stronger. The interest in, yeah. you know, product, locally produced products and locally grown products, yeah. uh, how our food is, is, uh, is produced. Um, you know, this connection with farmers and consumers it really is. It's, it's as strong now as, as, it, as it's ever been. Yeah. Um, and then the exhibition programming, you know, the, you look at, at uh, 2017, you know, it had uh, record exhibits in in all the agriculture areas from the, you know, provincial poultry show, the provincial Holstein show, the provincial draft horse show, you know, they all the provincial goat show, all had record number of exhibitors. That's the exhibitors, of course, are farmers that are participating. Because of that demand and that interest, you know, agriculture has, uh, has has kind of it's changed. Yeah, yeah, we're paying more attention to where our food comes from and right. starting as to ask those, be. Ask those questions. <laughs> Back to the lease structure again. So it sounds like um, all of this happened at no direct cost to the city. That's correct. Yeah. And so the the city has no money in it. They just have this legal document structure. Um, no. has, has that legality of all of that to this day been tested? Does it still hold? Yeah, they've they've um, the city has has looked at it. Um, the uh, the current lease was to be signed in uh, on January first, uh, two thousand and eleven, and the city was studying to see if they had to to uh, to sign the lease or if they could be repurposed at that point. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they took an extra thirty months. It wasn't signed till the middle of June two thousand and thirteen while they reviewed their in-house lawyers and while they consulted other loyal lawyers to find out if this this lease could be broken and you know i have a, a, an internal document from the legal counsel from the city that uh, was uh, from 2012 that said that this is this, this the only way this lease would be broken is if the exhibition broke it if they didn't pay their dollar you know if they didn't have an exhibition you know, if they weren't looking after the properties. So, um, you know, shortly after that advice from the lawyers, um, by June of 13, the city had uh, taken that advice to heart and, and mm -hmm. signed the lease. So it seems to map out, <clears throat> the history of it seems to provide a pretty good context for today. Yep. So then that leaves the question as we move into current times, is that there's a almost like a new tension in and around development of the ex movement of the exhibition up to the Grant Harvey Center, yeah. and um, two questions maybe: Do you have any sense of where that, that tension or that dynamic? Um, I mean, it not tension is well, right. maybe it is yeah. negative, but it is a tension because yes. you, you're not working a complement. Yes. The city and you and the ex aren't working a complement with yeah. each other because the ex would look radically different right now That's if right. you were. Um, and are there examples of other communities in New Brunswick, Atlanta, Canada, where 
the municipality and the exhibition uh, found that like they learned how to dance together to make it better for the community as a whole. So first yeah. the, the tension uh, here and then examples of where they had their breakthrough and they're flying now. Yeah. Well, there certainly is, is no, um, there's no demand for for space. It's not people talk about, you know, is, is there is there a push because of the, the growth downtown? Well, the, the growth downtown is a planned growth. It's a it's a anticipated or hoped for or wished for growth for the population that would boost up our, our, our property tax revenues as people moved in. But there is no current need for the space. So I do not believe that the tension is based on on people needing places to live. There's lots of places to live here. We're not full occupancy. And there's still properties left to develop. You know, we're not, uh, you know, we're not, this yeah. is not the last, you know, barrier of spot of, of, yeah. of potential. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's driven by, by a push for, for, for demand, for space, for, for, for residential or commercial. I think it's a, it simply comes down to a vision uh, that goes back, you know, decades of, of what should be downtown or what their vision of what would look like. And I think it's a very narrow vision, and uh, it, it doesn't represent the people that, uh, that come and use the facility. Um, and it can't, because there's over half a million visitors a year use the facility as it is. Hmm. And you know, I just don't believe that any venue in the city of Fredericton that has that much traffic, that's that many events, you know, that they would have more demand or more value in in residences, so I don't I, I, I don't know what what it would take to to resolve the that tension between the municipality, uh, but it, it does start with with open and honest discussion, mm -hmm. and that open honest discussion is not taking place right now. Um, if it did, we would have been asked the simple question of what does the exhibition need, you know, before you determine. That it could be moved, like when you say, like, what do you need? What do you need for, for infrastructure? You know, to get that size of population there. What do you need for yeah. um, potential revenue? Does it need to have more spaces where there could be another Tim Hortons located or another rental? You know, does it need to have, uh, you know, hundred thousand square feet in barns, or or could this be done with eighty? Or you know, yeah. ask the need. What are your needs? Then let us go back to our people, see if we come up with a solution, mm -hmm. and we'll present a solution that meets your needs. Mm -hmm. And that discussion has it's not taken place. So and that almost presupposes that a move is imminent. So right. Rather than, here's a community that's got something in their downtown core area that other municipalities would love to have. Right. And what's been missing from the conversation to a degree are, uh, what's the long-term vision for the X? Um, because then that would replace the long-term vision for the X as a development thing. Right. But before we get there, there's an, another question. It might sound odd, but have, has the Agricultural Society 36? 34. 34? Yeah. Have they done anything to upset the city? Well, we, we haven't moved. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, because it's, it's not dancing together, and mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of not antagonistic, but it's not clearly communicating either. So uh, an obvious question for an yeah. outsider would be, well, what the heck did they do to get the city to treat them that way? Yeah, I, d I don't know. You know, maybe somebody does, and I'd love to hear what, what it is. <laughs> but I'm not aware of anything specific that caused this rift between. I think there's certainly uh, there's been a history of a different vision for the place. Um, but this the exhibition has tried to meet the needs from the city. The city said they needed to see outside consultants create that vision of what the place would look like. So in the last six years, the city or the exhibition has hired not one, but two consulting firms hmm. to, to put down their vision of what the exhibition should be, could be on paper, on a document to present to city council. Hmm. And when that wasn't enough, the city said they still didn't, you know, the vision didn't match their vision. So, uh, we went back and the, the exhibition hired, you know, uh, a, a firm, an architectural firm, to turn that vision into to drawings. And okay, so an uh, artist rendition of it. Right. Yeah. 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 So we took that vision on paper, which are a bunch of words, yeah. and, and basically turned it into... Pretty it up. Yeah. We said, all right, here's what the vision is. Let's, let's put it down in, in yeah. you know. So we've met... You know what the city's come back and said well we want to see a vision well 
I mean, heck, here's his vision. Yeah. But but you get to authorize your own vision, don't right. you? Because, because it's, you have the right. autonomy to do that. Yeah. Quick question: How much did all that cost the board? Oh, and if you're allowed to yes. share, well, in the last six years, I'm just be be Ballpark. guessing, knowing the cost with this one and the last one, oh, probably. Twenty thousand dollars, maybe a little more than twenty thousand dollars, which is a lot of money you had to for pull a non-profit. Out of, yeah, right? you have to pull that out of your operating budget. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's are, are you able to share what, what would your annual operating budget be? So I'm thinking of like Cancer Society or Diabetes Association. Hmm. They're somewhat transparent right. with their annual revenues and expenditures and stuff. Are, are you in the yeah, same same turf? Yeah, we we are very transparent. I would say we, we couldn't imagine there being an organization that's more transparent. Um, all of our members, um, and we have an annual meeting where our financials are released, you know, within four months, you yeah. know, so, yeah. so this is now coming up to the end of 2017, uh, early in April in 18, our financials from the previous year are completely released. Yeah. Um, we, we make a copy, um, we send a copy to the city so they are aware of where we, we are financially. Yeah. Um, we have reports that are available to all the, the members of our organization. And uh, we send out to the, the media and let them know where we are. Sometimes it's been been bad. Um, for the last three f- years, it's been you know certainly it's been a lot stronger position. As we we're in a, we're in a good financial position right now. But yeah, it's is, um, is that very online? transparent. Is that online by any chance? You put it up on your website it, or by request? It's by request. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll put yeah. the link to your website on, and if yep. people are curious, Absol- they can get absolutely. Hold of you. Um, and I think maybe we need to do more. Um, in our financials, um, we don't we don't get into the numbers as it affects other charities because the exhibition is a nonprofit organization. But there's right now there's over 40 others that are service clubs, charities, and nonprofits mm-hmm. that that do benefit and fundraise from it. And maybe those are the numbers that people need to see as well as the numbers from yeah. the exhibition. That would not be unlike most charities will talk about the multiplier effect. So right. when you donate a dollar to us, we turn it into $7 worth of services back into the community. Yeah. So you would have a similar yeah, it's, argument. It's, some of them would be easier for it to track down because they're things like, like we run out RibFest. So we know in RibFest it's uh, generated over $50,000 for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. In other shows, like gift shows, would have uh, a donation that comes through, and they don't necessarily report that. But we could, mm-hmm. we could certainly request those numbers. Yep. So, um, on some of the uses where um, where it's another organization that's running the event, um, we could probably get the numbers from them. Um, but it's uh, it, it's yeah. got to be a huge number. Like it's, it's on my, oh, yeah, the the ripple effect would be pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. So, agriculture society. 32, 34, 34. Yeah. Next time I'll go 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, well, so from your budget, you've got a spinoff of several other budgets and, and we're talking the money side. And sometimes all of this has nothing to do with the money side. It has right. to do with creating a vibrant community right. side and, and trying to get um, the story out. And there's got to be similar stories from other communities where their exhibition grounds and their agricultural yep. connection into their urban setting has actually strengthened that whole community. Right. And we, you know, where I go to is, is to the other side of the country, and you look to Alberta, where uh, they have, I believe there's 80 ag societies in Alberta compared to 14 in uh, New Brunswick. And in Alberta, what you find is the province and the municipalities are using the ag societies to operate recreation facilities. So you'll see egg societies in Alberta that are running convention centers, they're running hockey rinks, they're running swimming pools and recreation centers. And they have a partnership with the, their municipality because it's certainly in a nonprofit organization, it's a lot more affordable to be running these events and, and they're able to run the facilities you know, without deficits, without that burden on the tax player because the the ag society you know relies on their membership you know of course their staff and that in these type of facilities but the operating of it is run by that nonprofit organization given that that's an interesting point because given that the exhibition grounds are owned Mm -hmm. (laughs) so there's no cost and given that the buildings are owned there's no cost in the way that their upfront costs are all absorbed then it's a matter of conversion and maybe a bit of vision to what those buildings could have become 10 years ago or 50, so that we would right. have them today. Right. Certainly the exhibition grounds would look a lot different today if the, the city had a partnership or a working 
strong working relationship with the exhibition board and the stuff that that we know you know would would be there today i mean it, it's quite likely with a, with a little bit of vision from the city the medical center you know the downtown medical center would have been on site because that was the province first location for it and there would have been better parking and easier access and it would have improved the look of the facility because um, part of the medical center being there eliminated all the chain link fronts that runs around it um, so it started to improve the facility um, there would be a, a skate park there because the exhibition has had approved for the skate park the city needs a nice beautiful skate park and it needs to be in a spot where the users for the skate park <laughs> could be proud of it you know we don't want to have you know that unseemly crowd there with our kids and we don't want to have graffiti all over it so it needs to be in an area where they can be proud of it in a nice beautiful setting and that helps improve the use of the exhibition grounds and the aesthetics of it you know there would have been a community gardens there you know, if the, today you go through and there could be community gardens. Maybe it's on the Smythe Street side, maybe it's on the back side, but there'd be, a, you know, a nice, much needed community gardens in the, on site. There would have been, uh, you know, a, an office there for Habitat for Humanity, you know, and that would have been located on the other side of William's Seafood on Smythe Street and would have been a nice entrance to the exhibition, would have improved the aesthetics where you'd have instead of those portable, you know, ticket wicket booths that we bring out, you would have had a nice permanent entrance the main entrance would have a nice um, you know wicked area there would have had office space for habitat for humanity and would have even had shower facilities so that would be there and you start to think just the stuff we know what it could have been oh and we would have had you know that million and a half in improvements to the facility that the you for know the that was barns. on the table right yeah. from uh, with ACOA and, and the province and with the municipal support those projects would have went through and they didn't because we didn't have municipal support so the place would have been fixed up at least to a million a million and a half worth of renovations to it so the place would have you know looked better with that partnership but i think it's more important to think about what it still could look like and, and not dwell on, on on what hasn't happened yeah. because the potential is still there there's still the need you know look at the city's needs from a, from a swimming pool to a field house on the recreation site we still need a strong community garden you know i, I think we still need a lot of a lot of potential uses so there's no yeah. full-size track you know so if you're a, you're an athlete and want to train um it's my understanding that the tracks uh at the sc high schools are, are actually a smaller scale than, than mm -hmm. full size needed for training so the field house concept well there's i think there's there's there's, yeah. there's there's soccer there's you know our recreation has, has changed you know when i was a kid everybody played hockey and mm -hmm. uh, now you know there's probably more soccer players than there are hockey players mm -hmm. uh, so you need more facilities so, you know and and the space you're describing are like big spaces right yeah right and, big then, spaces. and it's hard to find big spaces right in a nice location with lots of parking and yeah. you think well where is there a nice location yeah. with lots of parking ha has it come up yet from uh, the farming community the the expand notion of an expanded farmers market um, this this community Fredericton will do its they've got two farmers markets and they run just on weekends or um, the south side one is just on one mm -hmm. day um, but there's a fair amount of awareness on where we're growing our food how we're growing our food and how do we get access to our locally grown food with that comes the issue of storage yeah. and like a depot and has that surfaced or crossed there, your path yet there, there has been some discussions about it but the mechanics of how it would work out without an expansion of space and, and building space i mean okay. uh, because of the you know people will say well it's only used for the exhibition but the reality is there's 50 events a year yeah so how do you run like a weekly farmer's market when you know you're going to have a one week lost uh, for the farmer's market during the home show there's be a, a big rv show in yeah. there and then the rib fest and then you start thinking of all these other facilities or uses is there scheduling you know available for a weekly one day thing and it's hard to schedule for a one day yeah. event i guess well, bits uh, that flow through different communities is to have a, a seven day a week market location right. so maybe it's a That's separate right. building with a, the storage right. in the back there's, there's and, always a way to do it and you know and often it's money that holds it back and in this case you know it does go with money that's holding it back mm -hmm. that that in in other municipalities the the municipality invests in it you know and and if you say you know let's look at you know blue sky the exhibition grounds and say well let's just you know on paper in our minds let's get rid of all those buildings now we've got 31 acres in there and what could be there you know maybe this needs to be two levels and maybe this you know could be bigger you know if you just say well, what does it what could it be to yeah. meet all of our needs 
and still be financially viable because that's the great thing about the exhibition. Yeah. It's self-sufficient. There is no burden to the taxpayer. It's able to cover all the costs of, of looking after that facility. And, you know, I think that's that's important. I don't, I don't see the exhibition ever becoming a, a burden to the taxpayer that whatever happens there, it needs to be an affordable place for people to use and it should be self-sufficient. Yeah. Um, going backwards a little bit on the family history with the Odells and having this, because it also defines um, the conversation or the narrative in two terms. One, there's the legalities of the whole thing and the finances, because we tend to talk legality, who owns it, right. who's in charge of it, and then with that will come money. But then there's also how it makes us feel, like the promise, right? the notion of this was gifted to the city or to the community um, in perpetuity. And, and then there's a feeling about keeping promises or, or keeping uh, commitments, because that gets into the relationship right. emotional side. That's just as important to a community's well-being as its financial stability or its economic stability. Mm. And because it's food and farming related, it, it hits home a slightly different way. Has some of that been lost, that, that, that yeah. emotional connection with it? And is that potential to be rebuilt? Well, I don't think it's really it's lost between the exhibition and, and the community. I think it's lost between the exhibition and uh, the council and, and staff in the city. I think that that, that trust happens. Um, you know, it's formed. You know, we have an election and we have a chance to bring in different people, new people. So, you know, we're we're like everybody else. We're listening to see what those potential new councillors support and what the existing councillors support to get reelected. And and you know, I remember you know, it was only a year and a half ago we had municipal elections, and um, you know, we had a meeting with uh, at that time candidate Mike O'Brien, who sat down with the president and myself and and offered his support for the exhibition, in fact, pledged his support, um, which we then transferred to our membership and, and our supporters and our visitors and those half a million people that come to the exhibition, the facility, and we said, you know, hey, um, this like this mayor, he's going to support it. So when, you know, fast forward 18 months later and and it turns out to be, you know, promises on 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 kept, you know, promises maybe weren't sincere to begin with. Um, it's hard to work with and say, well, there's still trust there, even though you, you don't tell me the truth, you don't tell me what you're really thinking and what you'll really do, mm. but I'll still trust you going forward. I, I, I think that presents an issue. But the exhibition, you know, we, we, we're, again, more open for what's what's required in the future and, and what tomorrow can, can bring, so we're not... Uh, we're not stuck on what's happened and false promises that have made to us in the past. Um, we are very open and flexible in, in trying to, to build the exhibition up to, to meet the people, the needs of the people that maybe don't support it there, you know, that we think the majority do support that it's there. But, you know, we want to meet everybody's needs. Um, so we are trying to be, be open and we're trying to be factual. And, uh, and when we talk about things like the details of the lease, like those are, are factual. When we talk about uh, recommendations from lawyers, internal, those are factual. Uh, and we try and keep it just down to, to the facts and the number of events. You know, when we hear people randomly saying that, uh, you know, it's a one week a year venue, well, it couldn't be further than the truth. Like 50, yeah. 50 some events and half a million visitors. You know, the place is run down. You think, well, you know, We've tried to keep it up, and we've done the best we can, and it's painted and it's looked after. And the parking lot, you know, we patch it like anybody, any other business or organization would do. Mm -hmm. But we do realize like that place could look that much better. It could look like like this yeah. with a little bit of a little bit of support. Yeah. But, Are you aware of the city having a similar relationship with any other not-for-profit organization in the problem? Or are you yeah. unique because yeah. it's the X and, yeah. and it's not yeah. seen as the same as diabetes or cancer or Alzheimer's or, you know, yeah. Boys and Girls Club? Because you're structurally, you're exactly the right. same, but you're, your overheads are radically different and your visibility is radically right. different. Yeah, we've, we are a nonprofit. It's always been run by a nonprofit organization, but it is the perception out there is not like we've had people that come in and are surprised when we tell them that the city doesn't operate the facility or the city's not out fixing the parking lot, <laughs> you know, that we'd have to do everything on our own. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do think that the, that the city supports it financially, which they don't, yeah. no tax dollars go to the operating of the exhibition. 
and, and people have this different image because it's such a large facility that it's a public parking yeah. lot. And the, but, you know. uh, it's an important distinction that this is a relationship, relationship between a not-for-profit and a municipal government. Right. Yeah, right. It's not a relationship between a, um, a corporate entity that owns all that property. Right. It's a not-for-profit organization. So similarly, when you look at the city's relationship with other not-for-profits, are, are you being treated equitably? Yeah, I, I, I don't think we are. The biggest difference really between us and other non-for-profit is the uh, fact that we have such a large facility, you know, that, that most other non-profit organizations are running into an office or a much smaller facility. Um, so we uh, we look after, you know, this 31 acres in the heart of Fredericton. That's really the only thing that is different. Um, we still fundraise, you know, when we do things like uh, rent out for the home show or when we have rib fest, those are our fundraisers. Um, when we uh, we go out, we do our charity golf tournament or a fundraising golf tournament or collect, uh, you know, whatever it is for, for our fundraising, you know, produce the car show. You know, when we, we collect at the gate, you know, that's, that's a fundraiser. Mm-hmm. And what we do to try and help people understand that their fundraising is you see a lot of the things we do. We do partner with other charities, so people start to understand that we're fundraising not just for the exhibition, but we fundraise yeah. for you know the again Big Brothers Big Sisters is a good example because Ribfest has gone over so popular. Um, next year Ribfest will will fundraise when people come in, they put their toonie in the pot. Uh, you know we'll, we'll be granting a wish to the Children's Wish Foundation. Um, you know when we uh, we have an event and uh, you know the Relay for Life. You know, we benefit with Relay for Life. We do uh, our Gold Rush, which is our biggest, our Gold Rush Lottery is our biggest fundraiser. Um, that money is used for renovating. The, you know, we in the past uh, few years, we've modernized the, the food facilities, the restaurant facility and the buildings. Um, we've dismantled the old ice making plant that was it was in there. Uh, we repaired the roof to the Coliseum, which was a, was a huge expenditure. Uh, we've also used those funds and donated part of it back to the Cancer Society as part of the Relay for Life. So in their case, we're not only providing a facility, which they need the facility to run their fundraiser, yeah. we're actually taking our fundraising and contributing to help them. So we, we think that's a, it's an important part of our, our, our makeup is that, that we're not just supporting our, ourselves, that we're supporting you know, other really good causes in yep. our community yep. and often those are doing the same thing and they're supporting you know you look at what you know if we have a fundraiser for the lions club or kinsmen or kiwanis club you know these service groups yep. they do tremendous and they spin off and they help you know so many other nonprofits themselves looking towards the future perfect world stuff um do you have um uh, what you would like to see happen and and maybe paint for us a vision of what that property could look like uh, 20 years from now um, well, for, for what yeah. y- you would want. Yeah. We hear clearly from the city, you know, what they want to develop it as is housing, but we've never heard where, where you guys want to go. Yeah, I, I don't think our vision necessarily has to be that much different than the city's. Our vision, the difference is that, that the exhibition is there as well, but opening up, uh, you know, the idea, the concept of, you know, closing down Saunders and opening up Wilmot Street, so you've got that whole green space all the way from the Odell Park down. Um, you know, I don't understand how that couldn't happen and still be that green space behind us that's used for ultimate frisbee or harness racing, or whatever. Like the, I think those you know few times a year events, you know, aren't a conflict to having that open for for the park. I think that's that's something that's doable. It could work together. Development on the front, you know, improving the aesthetics of it. That's our goal too i mean we would love to have the place look something beautiful we'd like to have a nice entrance and and i've gone through you know exhibition grounds where you drive through and those those big archways and you know you've it's something significant because you're going into the provincial exhibition grounds and you you just know you've arrived and and that's what we, we would like to see and that doesn't mean there's not something else besides tim hortons that still maybe does have some residential there and businesses below that it, it can be both. And if it's not the medical center in the corner, maybe it's it's whatever the city vision for it. So I don't think that that our vision to improve the look of the place, to improve the use of the place, has to be a whole lot different than the city's vision. I just don't think they're they're one and the same. Or they're, 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 they're conflicting. I think they are one and the same. They're, 
they want to make it better for the people that live here. And I think the intent is, although you know, we might be butting heads, but the intent for the city is to make it better for the people that live here. So we both want to accomplish the same thing. We just have different views on, on the road work that's going to take us there. And I think if the, the city is looking at that, that it's going to cost, you know, multiple millions of dollars to move the location, hmm. if they said, you know, that same amount of money or likely even less could be invested into that to make it what the city wants that still meets the, the exhibition's needs, I think that's, that's the, the vision. I don't think we have a, 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 that big of a, of, a, of a conflicting goal for the facility. Are there examples where that's already been achieved? Do we yeah. have a link or two you could suggest that people could go I mean, do their homework I, and go, look yeah, at this town, yeah. look how they did. Look I at would this say town. keep on, keep, keep, keep a track of our Facebook. It's easier to update than our website. Yeah. Um, but the website has some information on it. Our Facebook, you know, from this conversation, I'm going to go back and, and look at things because there are definitely municipalities where there's, you know, people, I'd like them to see what, what could happen, which would be a positive thing. Um, and, and it's easy to look at the, the, the bigger the bigger centers like the CNE and, and how that's that's developed. And you look at the, all the egg societies in, in, in Alberta and in Saskatchewan and how those are you know very commonly yeah. you know almost entirely you know very much partnership with their municipality and running events. Like what, what, why wouldn't the city look at a partnership that would have the egg society operating? The, the rinks, not that we're offering to offer three, but why wouldn't they look at it and say, well, geez, you know, we're operating with a deficit now. You know, sure, it'd be nice to have a solution that eliminated that. And maybe this is, maybe it's not, but maybe, maybe it is. Isn't it worth looking at? Yeah. You know, or, or there's a need for a swimming pool. You know, is this a location for a swimming pool? Or is this mm-hmm. an organization that could maybe operate the swimming pool so we don't have a deficit with it? Yeah. You know, those are the things that I think you need to, to look at is how to the municipality can use this volunteer board and volunteer group to meet the needs of the community. Do you have a, a desired action? What will what will you need to hit that target for the exhibition grounds? Do you need a thousand new people to sign up? Do you do you need um, a call to action? I don't know. I don't know what, if there's an actual number. I think uh, that the best thing people can do is reach out and make direct conversations. I mean, knock on the door. Say, Merry Christmas. I want to talk to you. Here's our views, and we elected you to support yeah. our our needs in our community. Um, you know, whether it's Facebook or phone calls, I think this direct contact with it. We do have a petition at the exhibition office that people can sign, and they'll be uh, able to sign it online um, as well. Um, so, getting your voice, helping the numbers grow, becoming a member of the exhibition is. Uh, I think it, it's always, despite what's going on with the city, it, it's it's always been something that's that's well worthwhile because when you're a member you, you not only get a say in in to things like the bigger bigger issues like this with the city like it's a membership that will actually vote on you know do you move or would you sell it or whatever but but you also have the opportunity to sit on committees that might you know you might be interested in, in cars and sit on with people sit on just the car show committee aren't involved in the exhibition at all yeah. and we have people that sit on the exhibition committee that aren't involved in the car show and yeah. we have people that want to just do rib fest yeah. so you can contribute as much of your time as you want or you can just say I just want to be there to support I want to be a, a, a vote I want to be part that makes it a, a louder voice when you're dealing with the city and, and but it's open to whatever whatever is driving people to, to get involved with it yeah, typical of any volunteer organization right. how right. much is it it's it's only twenty dollars uh, and uh, it's basically uh, it's to cover the costs of, of our membership we uh, you know we'll, we'll all the financials be available for it we have an annual general meeting yeah. um, you know and uh, it's it's not a lot of time like a membership you know we, we have one general annual meeting a year yeah to usual um, yeah so you can participate once a year or participate every week I have a different direction a little mm. surprise maybe surprise but a fun piece that crossed my desk um, just a couple days ago so in the post that uh, our report had put up uh, as a commentary, as I see it, about um, the exhibition and the dynamic in any municipality with uh, a big piece of property and how decisions are made and, and how to have it be more proactive or productive. Um, so a um, person on Facebook sent a message, and this is the message I thought you'd enjoy. It. It's fun. Uh, just sent this to my relatives in the USA. They are the Odells that are part of this well-known family. 
they will not be pleased. And I said, goodness, it would be nice if they could contact us and so they can fill in their mm. part of the story right. from the family legacy. And so this kind person um, passed it on through Facebook and we'll keep you posted if, yeah. if they surface and connect you with that. Because this is, it's not just about dollars and cents and legalities, it's about our community's narrative. And the mm. Odell's were a big piece of, of right. Fredericton's narrative. Right. And then I think that's again, goes back to where we started talking about. There's really two questions. There's, does the city have the right to, and do they have the need to, the need to? And when you go back to the right to, when, the, when you get a family that gives the land, whether it's Odell Park or the exhibition grounds, and they ask for use, for it to be used, the city at the time had the right to say no. You know, the recipient can say, sorry, we do need space, but we can't put any, you yeah. know, any conditions on it. But they didn't. They accepted the conditions, and I think they you need to honor it. You know, and as time goes by, you know, you look at the Odell Park. I think it's as valuable, more valuable today as the city has grown. Right. And there's so many more things we could do to make that even more valuable. Just the park yeah. and the exhibition grounds. You know, similarly, they're more valuable today than they were there because of the way the our culture has changed. And I think the commitment was made that it would remain. The exhibition grounds and that needs to be be honored and you want the people you vote in to be your council and your mayor to be honorable enough to to, to honor commitments that were made from from previous and then the scary part would be well if the exhibition grounds we don't have to honor that agreement then do we have to honor the odell park agreement too yeah. I mean, where do where do you stop if you start breaking these commitments where 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 do you say well we'll draw our yeah. line in the sand yeah. here there's also a narrative in Fredericton or New Brunswick in general about preserving heritage. And and somehow the exhibition yeah. conversation doesn't seem to be part of the heritage conversation. Yeah, I think and, the, and yet its history goes back a bit right, longer than right, most of right. the Well, part of it I think would have been different today if the uh if the fire of the old exhibition palace that was which was a beautiful I mean that's like the playhouse. Like that was such a structurally significant building. Um but unfortunately you know the the uh, fire protection sprinkler systems and everything is so much better today than it than it was. Okay. Um, had we still had that historical building, I think people are more easily yeah. to associate a structure to that heritage. But it's not. It's 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 it can be an event. You know, it it can be an organization. Yeah. You know, it can be a field, and it is. It's very much the exhibition is very much part of the heritage and you think about you know you'd have to go back how many generations to go back to a time when there wasn't an exhibition to bring your kids to and your family to and is how important is that and we look at well times are changed and and there has to be other events to cover the costs of it and you're seeing those traditions now on, on other events like people don't remember when the home show wasn't there like it's a very important as you start to and you want to live in Fredericton and build in Fredericton and improve your home in Fredericton you, you, you go to the home show and you, you help create what will be your next one but those are like heritage starts with something and and you know it, it's unfortunate that, that people or more people don't associate it with the, the exhibition but we're only nine years away from having our 200th exhibition and that should be something we should be working on with the city should be working on together to celebrate him with the province because it's a, it's, it's a huge, huge event for the provincial exhibition. Final thoughts to close this out? Well, I would certainly, I, I would like to see the city come in and, and, and ask that question, what do you need? How do we, how do we work this together? Um, is there flexibility to work together to, to make it happen? You know, I, I think before we could look at things like saying, Yet we're not going to renegotiate the lease, you know, in, in 11 years, 14 years. Um, you know, I think before making statements like that, you need to, again, talk to your lawyers and find out why they've changed their opinion, why, you know, f three years ago they were sure that the lease had to be signed, what's changed today that they don't. I think if uh, you want to move the exhibition, you want to look at potential locations and understand what the exhibition is all about. So you don't make offers like the Grand Harvey, which is just not 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 a suitable. The, at least find out what the needs are. But ideally, 
you know, once you determine what the needs are, it, you know, a light bulb goes off and you say, well, geez, you know, those needs don't conflict with, with, with our needs. And, and maybe there's a way that we could work together with the city planners to come up with, a, you know, a different vision than this maybe that, that, that meets both of our needs. Thank you for this. Well, I think, I think we need to, we have to move forward now that that's impeding our, our, our future. Um, you know, the exhibition grounds without the revenues from rentals um, are, uh, you know, it will put more pressure on our fundraising and our other events. Um, you know, would could maybe drive costs to go up, which is not what we want. But yeah. if the city drives, you know, costs to go up to cover the expenses, you know, um, it, it's that, that's definitely a, a potential. Renting out things like the old Winners Lounge to, to the Wellness Center, um, allowing us to expand or tenants on there like William Seafood to expand to close off. Those are all revenue generating, yeah. and, and that's important. And that helps keeps the gate down to what it is and, and why our, our events are so affordable to come to. Um, I'd like to see, you know, the city honor the lease so that we can maintain our buildings. You know, the ploy where they, they wouldn't sign the, the, the letter acknowledging that we we're borrowing money to, to do renovations on the building. Um, that just hurts the look of the building. Like, don't do that and then come to us and say, well, it doesn't look better. Like, <laughs> Let us give us the ability to make it look better. Yeah. Um, if you're not giving us the financial help to make it look better, at least let us do it on our own. Don't impede our revenues and don't stop us from 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 renovating on the ground. Great. Thanks for this and thanks for all the content and detail. I'm sure this conversation will continue for a while in Fredericton. Thank you, Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.